Hey YouTube, Monix ATX here with a review and discussion on the Kimber Custom 2 Tactical HD 1911 chambered in 45 ACP. Uh, I have tried to record this video way too many times and keep messing up somewhere along the line, so you know what, we're just going to go with it. This is, this is the last take <laughs> I'm going to do with it, so if I mess up, you know, deal with it. Uh, first things first safety check magazine empty nothing in the chamber but uh, when you purchase this aside from the firearm itself oversized plastic hard case here your egg carton foam inside uh, while this is big and I didn't really care for it at first it's kind of grown on me just because uh, if you're going to the range you can toss extra stuff in there and it makes life a lot easier rather than trying to jam mags and extra crap in your pockets. Uh, comes with the normal paperwork, lock, uh, all that sort of stuff and a bushing tool which is a godsend because right out of the box before this loosens up um, this tool will save you from shooting pieces across the room and uh, dealing with a lot of frustration. It also comes with one Kimber 7 round magazine. I don't particularly care for this magazine. I haven't run it, so I can't tell you for sure. But, uh, you know, I think the Wilsons are a little bit higher quality. So that's what I'm going to run with it. And it's ran great. So this will go in the drawer as a backup magazine or maybe playing with it at the range if I don't want to, uh, to bring boxes of ammo. So, chambered in 45 ACP, it's a 1911. Uh, if you don't know what a 1911 is, check out some other videos. Uh, I'm not going to go into that discussion here, but uh, it is what it is. If you like 1911s, I think this is great. If you don't care for them, this might not change your mind. Uh, it is a full-size 1911, five-inch barrel, um, and it has quite a few little bells and whistles but nothing you don't need and nothing that I think is distracting or a problem or too uh, gimmicky on here. So kind of the features of it. Uh, full length guide rod on there. Front serrations if you want to press check or whatever. Of course rear serrations as well obviously. Uh, Meprolite night sights on there, ambi thumb safety that's extended a little bit. Some people like those, some people hate it. Personally, I kind of enjoy them. Uh, they don't interfere with how I how I shoot. Uh, generally, when I hold, my thumb will be right on top on the edge, so I'm not you know running into too many issues. Uh, that way, if I need to, I can actuate it, but my thumb's not pressing down on it it's you know to the side where my knuckle can can brush it uh pretty standard grip safety skeletonized hammer skeletonized uh trigger with over travel adjustment i do recommend tuning the over travel so you can have a short reset and not uh you know have to deal with that mess of things so keep that in mind right out of the box you might need to tune the over travel but that's basically putting in an allen wrench and a couple turns uh very very easy uh, g10 grips on here which i personally like quite a bit and have no desire to uh, change them out the back strap checkering is extremely aggressive uh, there's not too many per inch it's very very rough um, so that might be divisive for some people but i like aggressive grips so that is definitely a bonus for me as well as front strap checkering and checkering under the trigger guard here uh, which even though the grips are not overly aggressive the rest of the checkering definitely uh, lets you get a firm hold on this and it's not going anywhere also beveled magwell uh, which i think is very important if you know, you don't have any sort of beveled magwell. You basically have to get the magazine perfect. You can't kind of bang it off the edge. The beveled magwell there, even if you're off a little bit, helps funnel it in. So, necessity, maybe not, but definitely a good feature to have. 
Uh, other than that, you know, it's a 1911. There's there's not a lot you can say uh, to describe them that hasn't already been said. But fit and finish is phenomenal. Uh, there's been no scratches on here. Uh, there's a couple times I was a little bit more rough than I should have been and thought I was going to nick it a little bit, but not at all. Uh, everything, as far as tolerances go, are extremely tight. To the point that, out of the box, they're a little too tight. Uh, I guess you could compare this to buying a really nice pair of shoes where it's going to take you know a little bit of wearing them to get them broken in. Um, where ultimately they're going to be you know perfect and exactly what you want but you need to soften them up a little bit uh initially that's my thoughts you know exactly on this uh now i've got 350 rounds or so through it's loosened up a little bit however there's still no slide wobble nothing rattles around very very tight tolerances uh, and at the same time the action is ridiculously smooth uh, I don't really know how to describe it other than it feels like it's not metal touching metal it's just you know magnets or whatever and you're you're riding on a cushion of air in there uh, that has I was impressed with it initially out of the box but that has improved over 350 rounds of shooting it uh, during those rounds I have had zero malfunctions no failures to feed no failure to eject nothing as a disclaimer i did have a buddy that loaded a magazine put it in and had a weird issue that i cannot replicate and i don't know what he did but put the magazine in and was unable to get the slide to go back it was locked so took the magazine out pulled the slide back he reinserted the magazine slide forward and it was fine until there's about three shots left in the mag where it prematurely locked back. So I took out the mag, reloaded it, tried and tried to replicate it. I could not. Uh, what exactly caused that? I'm not sure. But, you know, I'll keep trying to replicate it uh, with snap caps and such. But I, I can't. So I'm going to say that that one was uh, user error on his part. Uh, 1911 trigger very good no real travel at all you know doesn't move a little bit of pressure a little bit of pressure clean break and then you've got a very short reset on that which makes it great for double and triple taps uh mozambique drills you know stuff like that uh, but it shoots beautifully it's of course way more accurate than i am uh but as far as actually running it it's probably uh, it definitely is my favorite handgun to shoot but uh probably by you know leaps and bounds over other things uh that i've run so with this, it is certainly not cheap. Uh, I'm not going to get into price because it's kind of all over the board depending on where you're looking at getting it from, new, used. Uh, but even on the higher end, I still think it's worth it. This is a 1911 that's starting to get into the more, uh, you know, fancy pants, spend too much money market. But to me, it's just on the bottom end of diminishing returns. So you can purchase this and that's kind of the high price point before you start getting into uh ed brown and nighthawk and all of those types of ones that you're really paying a lot more and in my opinion not getting quite as much out of it uh, would i like to have some of those absolutely yes would i like to have them for that price point uh not right now you know maybe in the future um, but sights on it work. You can line up the three dots or the geometry and it will shoot the same. Uh, I mentioned that because there's a few handgun manufacturers that 
basically use the dots as combat accurate and the geometry of the um, sights to have it right on point. I think that's kind of silly and I don't understand why you don't just make sure the, uh, the dots are lined up with the geometry if it's not adjustable for elevation, but that's what they did, so sure. Uh, but really, really have enjoyed shooting this tremendously. Uh, it functions very smoothly. It functions uh, with grease, oil, frog lube, fairly dry, fairly wet. Every time I've run it, I've had, you know, I cleaned it and lubed it up a little bit differently just to see if there's any issues, and so far, none. And it shoots, you know, better and better each time I run it. So, you know, if you if you are in the market for a little bit nicer 1911, uh, this is an all steel one. It is uh, it is not like some of the other Kimber, Kimbers that only have steel slides. The uh, the frame is steel as well, uh, which you know it adds a little bit of weight, but it's 1911. I want it all steel. If I want something light, you know, there's there's plenty of other options uh, for that. So if you guys have any questions, um, comments about it, anything specifically you want to see, you know, feel free to shoot me a PM or leave a comment and I will try to, uh, to get to those as fast as I possibly um, can with that. Uh, the last thing I will say, just to kind of reiterate, because the tolerances are so tight with the full length guide rod, it is difficult to tear down and reassemble the first few times until it starts to loosen up. So definitely be careful you don't shoot stuff across the room. Um, be careful putting the takedown lever back in so you don't end up with an idiot scratch. Uh, just common sense stuff like that. Uh, so there we go. The Kimber Custom 2 Tactical HD 1911 chambered in 45 ACP.